Hey guys, it's Mikey Chen. I've always wondered about this. How do people invent things? Where do their inspiration come from? I always imagine that when something gets invented, it starts off as an idea. Then maybe a group of people or maybe one person will work on it, refine it, then announce it to the world when it's ready for market. And the key of course is somebody has to have an idea. Like that time I came up with the idea for the Nork, but someone beat me to it. I still remember this. I was in elementary school and I was eating at KFC using a spork, which of course is a spoon and a fork. And I was thinking, how come there's no fork and knife called the Nork? But then I was like, okay, maybe that's a dumb idea because it's too dangerous to have a serrated blade on the side of a fork. But then somebody went ahead and invented it, totally ignoring all the dangers of having a blade in your mouth and the fact that it was my idea. Anyway, like I was saying, inventions typically start off as an idea, but there are some amazing things out there in the world that were invented completely by accident. Number one on our list is Coca-Cola. Coke is of course one of the most popular soft drinks slash toilet cleaners in the world right now. The person who invented Coca-Cola was a pharmacist named John Pemberton who made a remedy for headaches that he called French wine coca. It consisted of your normal ingredients such as cane sugar, uh, caffeine, and extracts of cocaine and cola beans. Basically he tried to make a remedy out of alcohol and cocaine. Pemberton's business started taking off but soon he couldn't use any more cocaine because it became became illegal. Yes, cocaine was once legal. As a result, Pemberton replaced it with a sugar syrup. One day, one of Pemberton's lab assistants accidentally added carbonated water to the syrup, which resulted in the creation of the world's first Coke. When Coca-Cola was first introduced as a new soft drink, it only sold nine bottles a day. But now, around 1.9 billion Coca-Cola beverages are sold daily. That's almost a quarter of the world's population. And who knew this popular drink was actually actually invented by a coke dealer. Nah. Number two on our list is Play-Doh, something most of us have played with in our childhood and for me just last week. Seriously, I played with my first Play-Doh for the first time ever last week and it was delicious. This fortunate accident was made when a man named Noah McVicker made a weird substance out of flour, water, salt, boric acid, and mineral oil. His creation was supposed to be used for cleaning wallpaper back in the day because it was reusable and didn't have any toxic effect. But eventually teachers used the wallpaper cleaner for class projects because it was able to mold itself into different shapes and sizes. McVicker's nephew found out that the wallpaper cleaner was being used in schools way more than was used for its original purpose, so he named the substance Play-Doh. Ever since then, Play-Doh became a huge success and was used by children all over the world. Next, we have potato chips. Now, I love chips, especially nowadays because there is every flavor imaginable and unimaginable. Ever seen those cappuccino lays? It all started when George Crum, a chef at a high-end resort in Saratoga Springs, New York, received a complaint about his potatoes. Crumbs was pretty confident in his cooking skills, but one of his customers complained that his fried potatoes were thick and soggy. In order to teach this guy a lesson, Crumb decided to play a joke on him and cut his potatoes into the thinnest slices possible. He added tons of salt to the potato slices and fried them until they were nice and crispy. He then served that customer what he thought was his joke dish. What he didn't expect was for the customer to actually love it. Crumb then proceeded to open his own shop in 1860 called Crumb's House. He served his signature potato chips and they were a huge hit. Sadly, since Crumb was a mix between African American and Native American, he wasn't allowed to obtain a patent for his chips because they only allowed white people to get patents at the time. So when potato chips were produced by the masses, Crumb was not given any credit at all. So remember guys, next time you chomp down on some chips, remember George Crumb, which shouldn't be hard because when you eat chips, you've got crumbs and you know, the guy's name is, is Crumb. Next. It's Linky, it's Linky, for fun it's a wonderful toy. Oh my god, I wanted one of these things so much when I was a kid, purely because I saw these things go down some stairs in a commercial, and I was like, wouldn't it be so awesome to walk downstairs and have a little metal slinky follow me? Of course, my parents said, why would we pay money for curly wire? Anyway, the slinky, like all the other things mentioned, was made by accident. In 1943, a man named Richard James wanted to make a spring for ships 
that could stabilize the ship's equipment. One day, one of the springs fell off and landed on the floor of the ship. Surprisingly, the spring kept moving and jiggling around. James realized that the spring could be an excellent toy, so he sold his new product in 1945 under the name Slinky, which was thought up by his wife. The couple managed to convince a department store called Gimbals to buy 400 Slinkies, and to their surprise, the toys sold out in an hour and a half. Since then, over 250 million Slinkies have been sold throughout the world, including the one I bought that only went down one step. I mean, all I ever wanted was a Slinky so I could walk down the stairs with it and it just goes down one step. Like seriously, false advertisement, killing a child's dreams, Psh, Slinky should be called sucky. Next item on this list is the microwave. Guys, never underestimate the power of snacks. Let me tell you why. On a fateful day in 1946, an engineer named Percy Spencer was working on a radar magnetron. A radar magnetron is like an electric whistle that creates electromagnetic waves. On that day in 1946, Spencer reached for his snack, a peanut cluster bar, during one of his magnetron tests and saw that his snack was an achy, melty mess. Spencer was confused as to what had happened, so he ran his magnetron test again, this time with an egg. He placed the egg under the magnetron tube and the egg exploded in his face. Pleased with his discovery, Spencer proceeded to make the world's first microwave popcorn with his magnetron the following day. And that's how the microwave was born. Number six, super glue. I have to admit, I doubted super glue in the past and that's how my palms were stuck together for an entire day. So how was this evil, sticky, substance? Invented. Well, in 1961, a chemist named Harry Coover was working for a company named Yeastman Kodak and was trying to create a sealant for jet aircraft canopies. Coover asked a member of his team, Fred Joyner, to help test all the compounds that Coover made. Most of the compounds were not sticky enough and didn't do the job. It wasn't until the 910th compound that miracle happened. Fred, no matter how hard he tried, could not separate the lenses on the machine that held the compound. Super glue is Harry's greatest legacy because of all the lives it has saved and will continue to save because of its medicinal power of sealing arteries, veins, and organs. And finally, fireworks. Fireworks are often seen during big celebrations like Independence Day or on YouTube in Darwin Award winning videos. It's generally accepted that fireworks were first accidentally discovered in the 10th century when a Chinese cook learned how to make gunpowder. It was said that the cook mixed potassium nitrate sulfur and charcoal together accidentally and lit the whole thing up. The result was shocking, flames of different colors. Furthermore, the cook saw that an explosion occurred if the ingredients mixed were lit up in a bamboo shoot and that's how fireworks were invented. Let me throw something out there for you. Have you guys ever wondered why during the last few decades so many things were invented? Like before, throughout thousands of years, we were slowly developing, slowly like moving from caves to stone castles to eventually having like bikes and then cars. And all of a sudden in the last couple of decades, things are invented left and right. It's like every single day, there's a new Kickstarter campaign or there's a new smartphone that has the ability to control the weather. I wonder where these ideas come from and why so many of them are coming to us now. I mean, is it because we're not just concentrated on surviving like people were doing back in the day? Like if you were born a thousand years ago, you just learned a trait and that's how you put food on the table. You didn't have time to sit around and be like, I wonder if I could invent this. Is it that where there's some sort of Inception going on where aliens are just like putting ideas in our heads because not only are we inventing things left and right We're inventing crazy things like I just did a video where the military is trying to create super soldiers by implanting them with uh, Computer chips nanotechnology. We're trying to modify our babies. Anyway, let me know what you think Why do you think there's so many things and not just things but crazy things being invented right now? Thanks so much for watching everybody. See you